What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Um, it's been a minute since I've actually checked out a 10 mention uh, video. I, I still don't know if I'm pronouncing this last name correct fully. <laughs> uh, and I recently I noticed that there's been a bit of a, a surge in people watching my older 10 mention reactions. And I don't know exactly what the cause of that is. It's happened before with other videos where I'll do a video and then like a year later, it'll start to pick up traction. And I don't know what causes it. So uh, for those of you that have been asking and brought it to my attention, I'm uh, going to be doing a reaction to a song called Cunt as in Continue. Now, I'm pretty sure based on how Tim Minchin does his comedy routines and his music, there's more than meets the eye. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure he's going to take this and combine it into a certain other four letter word that will probably get me demonetized hell me saying the title of this video is probably going to get me demonetized um, but whatever because I expect the video to get copyright claimed anyway so jokes on you you're taking money out of your own pocket whoever owns the rights to this song um, <laughs> and yeah I, I look forward to reacting to this because I don't really do a lot of comedy and uh, music reactions a lot now, even though I do plan on getting back into them. But mainly it's because of the copyright issues surrounding them. Uh, but one thing I did miss from doing these types of videos is they are very good at sparking something that allows me to have a deeper conversation towards the end of the video. It's been such a long time since I've been able to do something like that. And I'm looking to see if there's other videos that allow me to have a conversation especially in today uh today's time when we need some type of conversation and dialogue to discuss uh issues that are going on around the world i think that that would be extremely important now don't ask me how this is going to add to that conversation <laughs> because i don't have any idea what i'm gonna be able to grab onto with this title but let's check it out and see what it has to offer if this video is edited in some way like if they're, the audio sounds funny or whatever else, it's likely because the video was blocked and I had to um, uh, figure some way to get the video up. Now, with Tim mentioned, normally it, that doesn't happen. So hopefully it won't, knock on wood. But uh, let's see. This is Tim Minchin and the uh, his uh, heritage. I don't know what I was supposed to say, history. <laughs> Tim Minchin and the Heritage Orchestra uh title of the song. <laughs> Let's go. So yeah, this is um, a new song. I've read this kind of a sort of jaunty swing number and it's called um, Cont. <laughs> Um, let's assume he said juice. Neither should you. <laughs> yeah, I'm all out of juice. Physically and spiritually poor, that's a fact. I don't like black people. <laughs> Damn. It's just not acceptable. There should be some kind of law that is that. And I get the shits with Inuits. Oh boy. They got on my tits a little bastard. Women. Just make me so mad. Does that make me bad? Am I bad? Is that bad? I'm the fucking Italians. I just cannot stand them. <laughs> I'm just laughing. I'm just laughing because my channel is gonna die after this. <laughs> it's not their fault, I know, but still. Just to keep myself from crying. Unfucking Christians. I just wanna punch them in their faces. And I'm not coming. 
comfortable with Muslims on the tube. And I can't stand publicly breastfeeding mothers. Please, Tim Minchin, have a punchline. Please come along with the punchline. Where's the lesson? Had half the lyrics covered up. <laughs> half the lyrics were covered up. <laughs> I was angry. I think, we, I think we should probably do it again. I, I think if we leave it there, I might run the risk of being misconstrued. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even called cont, it's called context. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, the first part of the song, without context, that sounds pretty bad. But let's let's get the context of what he's trying to say. Even the title needs context. <laughs> it's what I like Tim mentioned. I don't like Jews who make and distribute kitty porn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like black people <laughs> who risk billions of other people's money gambling on future derivatives. <laughs> this is not acceptable. There should be some kind of law that is that. And I get the shit. Doesn't rhyme though. <laughs> who find out what job I do and regale me with a racist joke or two. They get on my tits a little bastard. That explains the giant Judge pauses. For not holding the same views as them is a big career and mothering. Just make me so mad. Does that make me bad? I'm a bad. Is that bad? And the fucking Italians, I just cannot stand them. When they take a dive in the penalty box, denying Australia its World Cup spot. <laughs> <laughs> you have to let me know if that really happened. When their pride parade blocked the traffic flow, when my baby had asthma and had to go to the hospital. It's not their fault, I know, but still. I'm fucking Christians who lean on their horn when my wife is being cautious at an intersection. I just want to punch them in their faces, although my anger is fleeting. I understand their frustration, she's a little too hesitant. And I'm not comfortable with Muslims on the tube Who look over my shoulder when I'm reading And I can't stand publicly breastfeeding mothers Who smoke cigarettes while they're feeding And I hate gays who talk carefully During the final act of King Lear And the fucking Chinese make me angry When they make sham erection potions And the horns of endangered by muscles I hate the rich who use their wealth as an excuse for bigotry. I hate the poor who use their poverty as an excuse for bigotry. I hate bitches who get rabies and try to bite babies. I hate whores who won't accept visa. I hate African racists. I hate Japanese homophobes. You need an American I Express. Rapists. I hate Burmese cats. Your deeds. <laughs> there you go. Context, ladies and gentlemen. Context. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, that see that is great. That is amazing. Context, 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 context. That goes with everything. And I think that I can actually have a bit of a serious conversation with this. Now, just know, if you get offended about what I'm about to say, I don't want to use the term snowflake, but you need to really, you know, like get tougher when it comes to people challenging your viewpoints. Because I'm not going to say anything offensive to any about anybody. So if you get offended, it's not because I said something offensive. It's just you don't like what I say. So sit back and pay attention while I go ahead and talk about this real quick. Now, recently in the news, there's been a lot of discussions about things, things happening, people getting canceled, people having conversations about statistics and things like that. But they never once want to bring into context because no matter what side you're sitting on, it seems like it's more important to push a narrative than actually to lay out the truth. So, for example, I'm going to give you an example from both sides. And I'm talking, when I say both sides, I mean the left and the right of the political spectrum, by the way. Um, people on the left. Recently, there was a story in the news uh, in the news about Wendy's. And people wanted to cancel Wendy's because, I guess in the news article, it was about how somebody from Wendy's had donated money to a Trump campaign. Which, by the way, if you want to cancel somebody for whatever reason you want, I mean, I think it's stupid, but you can go ahead and do that. I I mean, I've done it too. I understand it's irrational. I've done it also. I've canceled HBO personally because of that bullshit documentary they did about Michael Jackson. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, everybody has to do it. That's just my decision. If you want to support them, fine, do it. So I'm not going to say, oh, you have to support Wendy's because of whatever decision they made. Like, it, it's up to you to decide that. I'm not arguing that. But my point is get the context and get the facts before you make a decision. Now, when that Wendy's story went out there, people were talking about boycotting Wendy's because some franchisee made a donation to Trump's either his re-election campaign or something. But the story was people just saw the headline and it said that somebody from Wendy's did it. So people assumed that this meant the like a higher up from Wendy's, like a CEO or something. And they wanted to cancel the entire restaurant. When in actuality, if you actually read the story and go past the headline, you see that it was just somebody that owned a few Wendy's restaurants. This particular person did that. Now, they are not necessarily tied to the organization of Wendy's. They just own some restaurants. It would be like if I went out and bought restaurants. I don't necessarily have a tie to corporate Wendy's. So my decisions don't reflect Wendy's as a whole. But because reading into the full story is too much, that's what people like to do. Now, on the right, recently I'm sure you guys have been aware of the protests that have been going on around the world in regard to the George Floyd uh, murder. Now, it, it pretty much universally everybody accepts the fact that this was a heinous thing that should have never happened. I don't think there's hardly anybody out there that is, that's talking about that. Now, there are some people that are trying to throw in George Floyd's character for some reason, and they use their defense like, oh, these people are trying to make him into a martyr or make him into a saint. When I have yet to see anybody do that, somebody would have to point to me where George Floyd is being held up as like an example of a human that you should want to be like. The whole thing is just the tragedy of his death. That's all I've seen. So somebody have to point to me a spot where they're actually using him as a beacon of humanity. Now, but with that being said, whenever somebody has a discussion about the George Floyd protest or police brutality or police killing black men, women, children, whatever else, Black Lives Matter, things like that. You always hear counter arguments from people that will pull out uh, crime statistics, whether it's black on black crime or if it's the crime uh, rates in Chicago or just crime rates among black people compared to other races. And they use this as an example uh, well, I don't really know what the example is because 
it doesn't make unless George Floyd was actually what actually like went out there killing black people. I don't know what the purpose of bringing up black on black crime or whatever else is. That doesn't make sense to me. Like I don't get what the purpose is. But if you're trying to undermine Black Lives Matter by saying, "Oh, it doesn't matter that police kill black people because look how many black people kill black people in general. Look how many crimes black people commit." based on their population they represent 13 percent of the population but they make up uh, 40 to 50 percent of uh, violent crimes in america now that does now that while that statistic is true it takes out the context behind those numbers and nobody ever wants to actually talk about the context because again it's something that don't fit your narrative now the reason why black people would consider would commit more crimes than other people is because i'm willing to bet if you look at statistics black people are more likely to be living in low income or poverty levels compared to other races low income poverty areas regardless of what race you are is going to have higher crime statistics period (laughs) the full statistic that should be pointed out is take uh, two different races of people or multiple different races of people whatever and put them on the same economic level. So take black people in poverty, white people in poverty, whatever else, and then compare the the crime statistics to see, you know, what the crime levels are looking like. Do the same thing for rich. Take black people that live in high, well-income areas. Take white people that live in high, well-income areas. Compare the numbers. I'm willing to guarantee if you do that, the statistics are probably going to look a lot more realistic. When you just take a number and you throw it out there without any type of context or reason behind the numbers, it's going to lead to a lot of situations. And that also goes into the whole Black Lives Matter thing in general. A lot of people try to say, oh, Black Lives Matter mean you don't think other lives matter. No, that's not the case. It's just the discussion that black lives are seen as less important than others so they want to so everybody is up here and black lives according to people from black lives matter is seen as down here so what they want to do is they want to bring it up to everybody else now i've already discussed it before if people refer to it as black lives matter too it would probably cause less confusion but let's be real if you've been explained this and you still don't accept it then you're just not accepting it yourself you can tell someone the definition of Black Lives Matter all you want. Chances are they're not going to get it because they don't want to get it. But with that being said, with the Black Lives Matter thing, people point out police brutality and they go, oh, but you know, police kill white people more uh, frequently than they kill black people or whatever else. And it's like, while that, again, is missing context, it ignores the fact that white people make up a larger percentage of the population and thus are going to be more likely to run into cops more often. It ignores the point of why Black Lives Matter is important. It's not the fact that cops are killing black people as a whole. That's not the full argument about it. The argument is cops are killing black people and not being held accountable for those crimes. If a cop shoots somebody, okay, outrage, fine, 100% justified. But that cop needs to be held accountable arrested tried and whatever the results come from the trial okay but the problem is cop kills black person cop gets administrative paid leave or a vigilante like the situation with um the jogger these guys kill this jogger and instead of being detained instead of being questioned instead of being you know, treated as a suspect of a potential crime, they're let go. The only reason why they're even arrested is because a video comes out that was released ironically by the lawyers of those two people. And because it goes viral, that's what causes the police to go and arrest these people. From what I understand, that crime had happened 70 days before they were actually arrested so we know that what they did was wrong because the police eventually arrested them but the fact that they had to be held accountable based on public outcry 
is outrageous. If this video would have never came out, these people would have never been arrested and never would have had to answer for their crimes. The same thing can be said for the George Floyd tape. How many, how many times has that happened all over the country? Not just black, but white, whatever else. How many times has this happened and the cop just walks free because, you know, cops are usually held at a different standard when it comes to other people. And the fact that you needed a videotape to come out just to be able to hold the cop accountable is disgusting to me. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not against all cops. I'm not one of these people that are talking about abolishing police because I think that's a completely stupid idea. Now, should cops be required for all the situations that they're called for? No. There are certain situations that something else would be better. If somebody with mental issue is having an episode, should it be right to send just the cops? No. Chances are you should probably send somebody that is familiar with dealing with those type of situations like a social worker or a psychiatrist or somebody that can, you know, communicate with the person. Now, should you have a cop maybe there as security that doesn't get involved unless it seems like they need to be involved? Sure. Fine. But certain situations require what I think will require other specialists as opposed to just police. Call police in when there's an actual violent crime and you need to find and uh, detain some type of suspect. That That's when you should call the police. Um, but, yeah. Now, my, my personal opinions, and I've already told the context. Context on both sides. Context on anything. Bottom line is, discover the context before you make a judgment. That's something that is a pet peeve of mine. I recently did an interview where I talked about one of my pet peeves and I discussed that my personal pet peeve was people taking the Michael Jackson uh, allegations too serious. But that was actually wrong because it's deeper than that. It, that is something that gets on my nerves, but it's not just the fact that it's Michael Jackson or whatever else. What gets on my nerves is when people take something at face value without looking into it themselves. That goes into the, the situation with Black Lives Matter. That goes into the situation with Michael Jackson. That goes into the situation with uh, conspiracy theories. That goes into the, uh, the situation with Illuminati. That goes into the situation with like, whatever subject that you want to talk about where people will just take something at face value. That goes into the situation with Fox, uh, I said Fox News. Fake news and... Um, internet news in and of itself people will just read something and then just believe it without doing any type of research without checking the sources without seeing if the sources are actually valid they'll see a meme somewhere and then just go off of it and that's what i have a pet peeve with the fact that people will just believe something and not just believe it but they'll base their entire judgment on somebody on those beliefs and then when it turns out that what they believe was false, they've been so invested in believing this batshit crazy thing and their egos are so strong that they can't accept the fact that they were wrong. So they just doubled down on it. I hate the fact that when somebody gets into a discussion about something, they're their decision to believe you is based on how nice you are or how or how rude you're not being or something like like the truth and this is ironic because i'm about to be quote uh i'm about to be quoting um what the hell is the weasley dude's name ben shapiro even though i'm i i've been saying this before i knew ben shapiro said this <laughs> Facts don't give a damn about your feelings, period. If I tell you two plus two is four, but I call you a son of a bitch while I'm doing it, does all of a sudden does that mean two plus two doesn't equal four? Because I was rude to you, you don't want to believe me now? Facts are facts, period. And people will hear something on the internet, find out it's wrong by, from somebody else, through a comment or whatever else that'll give an actual source and an actual fact 
But because they call him an idiot or something like that, they'll dismiss him. Like, you know what? Screw it. I don't want to listen to you because you said this. And it's like, okay, so you want to be stupid or continue to be stupid because somebody didn't want to feed into your, you know, being nice, or whatever. Now, don't get me wrong. You should always try to be nice with people on the internet uh, unless you have reason to not be. But the bottom line is, this is just how the world works. Now, you can be mad at somebody, but at the same time, still take what they say serious. Like I told you before about the whole black on black crime statistics or the black people committing crimes at a certain percentage or whatever. It pisses me off hearing those numbers, but I can't deny those numbers exist. It's a fact. I was a Democrat for a very long time. Now I consider myself an independent because Democrats are spineless, but I was a Democrat for a long time. Truth of the matter is the Democratic Party was the party that created the KKK and were the party of slavery. Now, there's context behind that, of course. Again, tied with this video. Look into it, but... I can't deny that fact. That is a 100% fact that is undeniable. So, even though I didn't like it, I accept it. That's what happened. <laughs> like, It's just, the more people can understand context and accept it, regardless of how it makes you feel, is the sooner we can get around this whole fake news bullshit that's going around on the internet, where people want to throw that term around as if, it just relates to what you don't like. The same thing with bots. People are always calling people bots. Oh, you're a bot. Or they'll pull up how many followers you have on Twitter or some shit. Oh, you only have two Twitter followers and you created your account a month ago. You're a bot. Even though the person might have said something that is 100% true and could make you a better person from believing it. But because they said something you don't like, you'll try to find some way to to dis uh to take away from their argument without actually tackling their argument you'll try to discredit it in some way i mean like i said the sooner we can get around that the sooner we can actually start to get into a world where fake news isn't an issue you know you want to know the best way to tackle fake news learn about sources learn how to verify sources learn how to look up where a particular news story started. If the if the news if cable news isn't going to be journalists like they're supposed to be, if they're just going to be sensationalists that like to go around pushing certain narratives and things like that, you should understand that at this point because at this point they're not even hiding anymore. Understand that and become the investigator yourself. Now I know that you shouldn't have to, but this is the world we live in. What are you going to do about it? You can either continue to live in this world where you will dismiss everything as being fake because of your distrust of the news, or you can take matters into your own hands and start looking up yourself what you need to be looking up. I mean, you wouldn't. we would never have to worry about fake news ever again if people were more willing to accept the fact that you have to do your own journalism. You have to look into sources yourself. And you have to understand that sometimes what you might find isn't what you will like, but... You have to verify if it's the truth or not. You have to be willing to accept whether or not it's the truth. Don't just dismiss it because it's something you don't like. There's going to be a lot of times where you're going to hear something. Either it's about a person or about a, a thing. A, no matter what it is. Gaming, politics, religion, whatever else. You're going to hear stuff that you don't like. But what you should do is instead of dismissing it because it's something you don't like. Accept the fact that, okay, this is a new claim that's being made. If I have enough faith in what I believe in, I should be able to test this claim and prove it to be wrong. But be honest enough to accept that if it is right, okay, damn, I have to change my viewpoint. Don't just dismiss it because it doesn't go with what you want to believe. Be willing to change with the claims that are being made. Period. Now, Again, if you are offended by anything I just said, <laughs> again, you that this is something that you need to check yourself. You're one of those people that I was just talking about that will hear something they don't like, even though it's something that could be true, and dismiss it simply because they don't like it. 
So there should be no reason you should be offended by anything I just said. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I am Devon Da Vinci. I hope you guys enjoyed this and have been a little more enlightened. Um, if you want to join the Renaissance crew, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button. Um, if you want to join my Patreon, again, the link for my Patreon is in the description box down below. All you have to do is uh, pledge $1 a month and you get exclusive movie reactions as well as early access to different things that I'm planning on testing out. Like I said, maybe if I decide to do a podcast or whatever else, uh, that is where it will likely appear first. So um, go ahead and check that out. Uh, I do have a daily motion account as well that I will upload uh, reactions to my TV or re do TV show reactions in case they get blocked on YouTube. It's likely that they'll appear on daily motion and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to give you the deuces. I'm signing out and I will see you guys later. Deuces. <laughs>